Today we are discussing a piece of theater news. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it is not good news. In fact, it's all bad. The Broadway League announced over the weekend that Broadway will remain dark until at least June 2021. In fact, some shows have even preemptively opted to postpone their opening night even further into the future. We got a lot to discuss, so let's jump into it. If this is your first time seeing my face, hi! My name is Kat and I really like musicals. If you really like musicals, hit subscribe to join the musical theater internet cult. We're not usually this much of a downer. We usually like to have something called fun around here. We drink wine, we gossip about boys, and we analyze Sondheim. Question of the day, tell me something good. I think we could all use a pick me up right now, so please share a small victory in the comments below. Maybe you took a shower today. Maybe you sang in the shower and you sounded amazing. Literally anything, we're looking for a silver line. Here. I'll link these down below if you haven't seen them, but I just watched that video of everyone singing Sunday from Sunday in the Park with George outside of TKTS, and I thought that was so beautiful and moving and really touching. Also, something that I feel like no one is talking about is Will Blum from Beetlejuice's One Man Floyd Collins. He performed this incredible, like, 12 minute medley and then built a cave out of cardboard in his apartment. It is absolute insanity and quite possibly one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. Share something that made you smile in the comments down below. Okay, so let's break this down. This past spring, all performances in New York City were suspended in accordance with pandemic safety procedures. The Broadway closure began on March 13th, which is an especially notable date because that section right there is where you ramp up into peak Tony eligibility season. In fact, 16 new productions were scheduled to open in the coming weeks. Interestingly, now that we have the Tony Award nominations coming out today, I think. Is it today? I don't know when this is going up. Only four musicals are eligible for the Tony Awards this season. Three of the four are jukebox musicals and there are no revivals. So it's gonna be a teeny tiny year. Broadway was initially to remain dark until April 12th, 2020. So just about a month. Then it was pushed back to the summer and then to the fall, and then through the rest of 2020, and now we've gotten the latest update. On October 9th, the Broadway League officially announced that performances would be suspended through May 30th, 2021. Something worth noting, and I'm sorry to be more of a downer, that doesn't mean that Broadway will reopen the next day. In fact, we have no official return date, we just know that it won't be before next June. And some shows are waiting even longer. For example, the highly anticipated Broadway revival of The Music Man, starring Hugh Jackman and Sutton Foster, was originally scheduled to begin previews this fall. They've now officially pushed back their opening night date to February 10th, 2021. Flying Over Sunset, Intimate Apparel, and MJ are now looking at a fall opening date. Now this news comes as a major disappointment not only to theater fans, but to everyone who works in and around the live performance industry. You know, I felt weirdly guilty that I was so sad over musical theater being put on pause during a global crisis. Like, come on, Kat, there are more important things to worry about than jazz hands. But this is a major, devastating loss. I mean, according to CBS, the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis reports that arts and culture contributes a whopping $877 billion, billion with a B, to the economy. Of course the shutdown affects actors and musicians and crew, but the impact extends so much further than that. So many jobs and lives are affected. Think about the restaurants surrounding the theater districts, the danceware shops, the ticketing agencies. The entertainment industry impacts so many different fields. Not to mention the emotional impact. For so many people, myself absolutely included, theater is where you find a, a family and a purpose. It's an adrenaline rush and a creative outlet and a home. So hearing that our community won't be fully back until at least next summer is really difficult to hear. I read a really great article by Sarah Jessica Parker that she wrote for Variety, and she was supposed to return back to Broadway in Neil Simon's Plaza Suite, and she wrote about her experience with the Broadway shutdown, and I thought it was really interesting to hear her take on it, so I'll link that down below if you haven't seen it yet. Also, something worth noting, this doesn't just impact productions in New York City. This affects theater 
everywhere, like national tours, educational theater, regional theater. Different states, of course, have different safety measures in place, but the fact of the matter is that most theater is on an indefinite pause. So, what do I think about all this? I'm devastated. I took a couple of days off to just do my favorite activities, panic and cry, and now I've pretty much pulled myself together, so I'm okay. I mean, as okay as you can be. I'm very much a doer. Like, I can't just sit and be sad for too long. I need to do something about it. I'm absolutely 100% aware that I am definitely an Amy, but I will say that is one of my Joe-isms. I've been working out, getting sweaty, getting those endorphins. That's been really good for me. I've been going outside, even if it's just to stand in my own driveway for five minutes for no real reason. That's also been really good. On a more theatery note, you can donate to Broadway Cares, the Actors Fund, or any of the other organizations helping support creatives during this time. Broadway and the performing arts aren't receiving as much governmental financial aid as other industries, so if you're in a position where you can help, please consider doing so. And there are so many cool fundraising events going on right now. Like that's a great way to help support the arts, but then also bring some of that theatery magic into the safety of your own home. You got concerts, master classes, Q and A's, full out virtual experiences. They're really, really cool. I got to be part of a fundraiser over the summer for Broadway Cares. And then later this month, I'm going to be hosting one for the Actors Fund, which if you didn't see that announcement, I'm teaming up with a killer party, which is a brand new murder mystery musical series that was shot entirely in quarantine. And I can now officially announce my co-host, Aladdin's Michael James Scott. So if you want to join us for this incredible night of theatery fun and help raise money for the Actors Fund, I'll link ticket info down below. Hope to see you there. What else am I doing to maintain sanity right now? I'm taking time to finally check out all of the things I've wanted to read or wanted to watch but never really had time for before. Like I recently finished 36 Questions, that Jonathan Groff audio drama, musical, I don't know how to categorize it, but it is absolutely insane. I'm thinking about doing a whole video about it on my second channel because it's just crazy. I have a lot of thoughts on it. I've been reading, watching movies, listening to podcasts. I've been watching a lot of panels with creative people that I look up to. Like I just finished a really good one with Bill Hader and John Mulaney talking about their anxiety and how to remain creative under pressure. I've just been trying to be really nice to myself. Another really big thing that's helped me feel less isolated is reaching out to my friends. I remember at the beginning of quarantine when everyone was doing like weekly Zoom parties or other socially distanced hangouts. And now that we've been living this life for such a long time, I feel like everyone's kind of given up on that. But you can't. It helps you maintain sanity. Just remember that there is a life beyond quarantine and it's easier to shoulder that emotional burden when you're not doing it alone. This might sound really cheesy, probably because it is, but I was driving the other day and I saw this big billboard that said hope is not cancelled. And it's so true. I know that things look bleak and I know that it is so emotionally exhausting to just exist right now. Believe me, I am right there with you. But the way I see it, we've got two options here. We can either give up and be miserable for who knows how long, or we can come together as a community and get through this together. I hope you know that I'm here for you and I care about you and I'm not going anywhere. If you're in a public space, please wear a mask, please vote, take care of yourself and look out for others. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, 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 so much. And I am so grateful for this community, especially right now. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.